Hi everybody, this is Sam with Scrappy Industries. Today I want to take you on a ride in my grandpa's 1956 Mack LTH truck. This truck has a Cummins Big Cam 3 400 and a Mack quad box transmission. So an old school two stick transmission for those of you that don't know anything about that. You have a five speed main box, just one, two, three, four, five. And then your left stick is a splitter. So basically what you can do this is a quad box, so there's four gears on that left stick, but you basically are only run it with three. The one is an off-road only kind of a shift. So you have three partial gears for each of your five main gears. So I want to try to show how that works and basically show the difference of the quad box, old school two stick style versus a more modern 18 speed like the Superliner and the Ford LTL have in them. Those ones are using air to do similar functions. The splitter basically is a high low in each gear and the rain shift gives you like a, another go. So you go through one, two, three, four, five, hit the rain shift on the front of the shifter. And then you have four more gears on the high side. Those are your nine gears. And then the splitter with your thumb gives you a split. So you have a low and high in each gear. So that nine times two gives you your 18 speeds on an 18 speed transmission. So this is the shift pattern on this truck. As you can see the left stick the auxiliary or compound however you want to look at it this low low is basically an off-road only i use that when i'm in reverse like to hook up to the trailer you want a nice slow reverse things like that low split would be like first gear and then you shift over to direct is second gear we'll say and then high split is kind of like the third gear in the main box you have one two three four five like any transmission in reverse so theoretically, you can put it in reverse and have four different reverse gears. Normally you're using low, low or low split is a pretty fast reverse, but it's a nice change. If this was in a dump truck like paver application, I'm sure you'd want to shift up, go faster in reverse to catch the paver, things like that. So these are the two sticks, your main box again, which is the reverse and then one through five. And then the auxiliary box, which we're in low, low right now, because I was just backing in here last but you have your low split over to the direct and then up to high split. So depending on what you're doing changes how you want to use your splitter. Some of the shifts like first to second is a pretty small gap. So most of the time you can just shift that like a full gear. Like don't worry about the splitter and just shift first to second. Second to third, a little bit bigger. If you have some weight on a hill, you may want to split that one time empty. A lot of other times you can just take the full gear. Third to fourth is a big hop. So you, what you'll end up doing is you're shifting, like if you're in third and you're in low split, shift to direct, shift to high split. When you shift third up to fourth, you're going, you're going to double clutch and slow it way down. Usually Jake shifting because it's such a big jump. If you don't use the Jake to shift, it takes forever. And then you're pulling this out, double clutching by revving up because now you're down shifting this one to get it into low split. You do not want to pull both these sticks into neutral for any period of time while you're driving because what you'll have is this chunk of gears in the middle of the transmission that quits turning and then you cannot get in a gear until you basically stop and start over. The only time that I end up with both sticks in neutral is when you are trying to downshift and if say you're in fourth gear low splits so you're in the lowest fourth gear but you're you're on a hill and you're out of power and you need another downshift. What you have to do is put your arm through the steering wheel pull them both out and you shift this over and put it in high split the the auxiliary transmission is kind of synchronized on the up shifts so when this shifts up you can get that more or less jammed into gear and then rev match your fourth to third shift on the main box so i'll try to show you that today too that's kind of the most challenging part about a two-stick transmission it's just not quite the modern conveniences we've come with you know a 13 or an 18 speed transmission and of course now a lot of trucks are automatics, just even old super dog and the Ford over there still having manual 18 speeds is kind of becoming a thing of the past in today's world. So this is the interior of the old Mac. Grampers bought this truck. It came out of California. It was a cab and nine pallets of parts and an old 335 Cummins sitting in the frame rail. He completely rebuilt this truck. The cab was gutted clean painted as you can see this was done in the mid to late 90s basically before my time of helping but this truck has always been the most near and dear to me as anything in this world this is what I learned to drive on I can still look over in that passenger seat and see Grandpa sitting there and I sure do miss him
out. That's first low split, pretty low gear to pull out in. navigate the driveway here. First to second shift. Let's take a full second to third. Let me take a partial gear. Another partial gear. So that's third high split there. Gotta pull this hill and pull out, so that'll be it really for the higher shifting right now. We take a big shift. Mess it up. There ain't nothing like a Cummins Jake break. So now we're in direct fourth. Our usual next shift is to go to fourth to fifth. You can just take your time and just pull it in and it'll slide right in there. It's a short shift. It's less noisy than running high split fourth. And that's cruising up. We're not having to dump the airbags. That's why four nine seventy seven needs to go home. Not sure if we have a not sure if we have an oil cooler issue. Could be head gasket cracked head, I guess too, but I think probably most likely we got an oil cooler. Oh and the turbocharger is sounding like death, so there's that minor problem as well.
certainly happy with that loading. Right there lined up perfect. I could have pulled up a fuzz more, but we'll be all right. So we have three axles. So since we've done the big cam swap, I think this is the most weight I've had on this truck. We're up high 70s. The 977H weighs like 40,000 and we're like a high 30s lightweight. So probably up there 76, 78,000 pounds here anyway. So let's see what she's got. Boy, she's a woman. I'm trying to keep that passenger window up for noise purposes. Let's do it to it. Check out over that nice, sweet old long hood. Bye, Brownsville. Jake coming down here.
Time the red light at the bottom of the hill. There it is. Give it to her. Because I was going third to second, I only took up one splitter down. They might have been able to pull high split second, but we'll let her go. Did a nice 20 mile an hour. Cars behind us love me. Better get her shed another gear. Much. Well, the old Mac performed flawlessly on that whole trip. I'm proud of her. 
pretty much gave her bath and a quick little check over and off we go. So that's a win. Definitely a lot of fun to drive that truck. A little two stick getting back into that. I was grinding about every shift, but you're going to have that. Every, if you run this truck a lot, like 10 trips to Brownsville, you'll get it figured out, put it in the barn, and next year you're kind of right back where you started. So that's how it goes. I'm sure somebody that drove a uh, transmission like this every day or some people today that are better than me can shift it without ever thinking about it, never mess up, never grind, but that's not me. So I'll try to explain it my best. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to take the 977 off the trailer, put the truck away. So until next time, thanks for watching. This is definitely not recommended practice.